When it comes to ancient Egypt, nothing is more highly debated than the age of the Sphinx. Blake Cousins, Third Phase Moon. Welcome back, everybody. Some people believe it's over 5,000 years old, and some others believe it's between 12 to 13,000 years old, and some also think that it's up to 25,000 years old. So, why such different times? Why is there no consensus of the age of the Sphinx? Well, there's a few things we know for sure. First, the Sphinx is older than the pyramids. Well, how do we know this? Well, going by standard Egyptian chronology, there are records indicating the existence of the Sphinx before the reign of Khufu, the creator of the Great Pyramid. In modern times, when we had discovered the Sphinx, it was covered up to its neck in sand. So there was a long time it was believed that the Sphinx was nothing but a head. But as excavation started to take place all around Egypt, it was discovered that it was not just a head, but there's an entire body attached to the Sphinx. But this isn't the first time that happened. In the year 1401 BC, the pharaoh Tutmosis was still only a prince and not even in the line to be a pharaoh. While out hunting on a trip with some of his followers, he grew tired and lay down next to the Sphinx and had a dream and says the Sphinx spoke to him. And this is what it said. Look at me, see me. I am your father and I shall give you the kingship on earth in front of all the living ones. You shall wear the white and red crowns upon the throne of Geb. The earth shall be yours in its length and width and all the eye of the Lord of the Illuminatis. The food of the two lands shall be yours and the great tributes of every foreign land your lifetime will be time in many years my face is yours my heart is yours and you are the protector to me for my condition is like the one that is in need all my limbs are dismembered as the sands of the desert upon which I lay have reached me so run to me to have that done which I desire knowing you are my son and my protector Come forth and I shall be with you. I shall be your leader. So Tutmosis did as the Sphinx instructed and uncovered the Sphinx's body. And the Sphinx kept his promise and made Tutmosis Pharaoh. And to honor the occasion, Tutmosis had a stella created and placed it between the paws of the Sphinx. So what does that tell us? It tells us that the time of ancient Egyptians the Sphinx was already an ancient monolith, a statue buried up to his head in sand. And now today, modern geologists who study the Sphinx determined that the outside perimeter wall has been eroded away by rain and water. It's fairly unanimous in the world of academia that it hasn't rained like that in over 11,000 years. So even in ancient times, the Sphinx was already ancient and the Sphinx isn't alone. There's another place in Egypt that was ancient in ancient times. And this temple is unlike any of its surrounding temples near it. It's 15 meters under the ground, and it's made from giant, perfectly cut pieces of solid granite. And although granite is used in a lot of statues and blocks in Egypt, there are no buildings made of solid granite, except for Osirian. If that wasn't strange enough, the Osirian is also lower than the natural water table, so every year, the Osirian fills with water and has to be pumped out. But then a discovery was made that blew everything else out of the water. Now, while everyone was so wrapped up in the discovery of tomb Osiris, people were distracted away from the incredible engineering that took place. They started with a shaft, cut 20 feet straight down, then took a 90 degree angle, then went out 40 foot more, then went straight down another 40 feet till you came to a staging room that had seven hollowed out carved places inside were seven granite stone sarcophagi. And in the corner of that room was found another shaft cut straight down to 90 feet underneath the Sphinx. And there they found the tomb of Osiris. A sarcophagus that was over 12 feet long whose lid alone weighed nine tons. It rested in a pool of water surrounded by four pillars on each corner. 
they had appeared to be at one time black granite stone, obelisk, but has since been destroyed. So was there a god in there? Who was inside this giant sarcophagus? Well, Egyptologists tell us nobody was in there. It was a symbolic tomb, and this place was a place of prayer and worship. Although there are no remnants of any offerings to the gods or sacrifices that were made, and there were no ladders of any means of getting down to the tomb. Another interesting point is the shape and design of the tomb of Osiris. It has no markings, no magical inscriptions to ensure the god's king's passage into heaven. It was blank, not a single hieroglyphic on the tomb itself anywhere. It was pretty rare for any sarcophagus to be made up of solid granite, but there is no other place that contains a giant sarcophagi and it's just as mysterious as this tomb. They weigh up to 50 tons and were carved from a single block of granite. Sarcophagi were moved underground through hallways carved out of bedrock that are barely wide enough for the sarcophagi to fit through. Now there are theories on how they move stones for constructing their pyramids. Are there any other gods that have a tomb? Why is Osiris depicted with his dark green alien skin? Was it to represent his death and what happens to the human body after it dies? Or was it meant to represent an alien god who descended from the stars? Or was this just a figment of the imagination of some ancient Egyptian? It does seem curious that the ancient Egyptians don't speak of Osiris as some kind of men spoke about him as a king of their past. Their first king, the creator of civilization, he had his own land. His brother and sister has had land as well. He had his own people that prayed to him, his own temples dedicated to him, laws and rules were governed by him. And for example, to show you how far back in time that Osiris supposedly existed, his first rules for helping to create civilization was that his followers, man, can no longer eat each other. He banned cannibalism. One of the first laws decreed by the Lord Osiris that no man can do. He made many laws, purchases, lands, trade in slaves, ordered construction, and a list of other things that any normal human might do but was no normal human he was the first god king lord osiris creator of civilization i want to get your opinions people below of what was the pharaoh osiris up to why did he uh, reveal what the sphinx truly looks like some people say there's a uh, many other secrets of the sphinx that is still yet to be revealed Thanks for joining me, everybody. Keep your eyes on the skies. Blake Cousins. We'll see you again next time. By popular demand, Paul Baird is back with his third album, Third Phase of Moon, The Strangest Things. Twelve brand new tracks heard by millions on your favorite channel, Third Phase of Moon. Available on iTunes, Amazon, and music streaming services. Phase of Moon, The Strangest Things. Available right now. Links are below.